Hi, I'm Steve Nicolarat. This is Baseball School from the Ground Up. In the last session, we talked about a man on first base and a bunt, and I made reference that the first baseman couldn't charge until the pitcher went to the plate. And the reason why the first baseman couldn't charge is if the first baseman left first base while the pitcher was still on the stretch, the runner at first base could expand his lead and basically steal second, and then the offense wouldn't have to bunt. So the first baseman has to stay and play first base, hold the runner on until the pitcher goes to the plate, then he can charge. However, with the man on second base, with the man on second base, and your defense is anticipating a bunt, the first baseman actually starts off slightly in front of first base. And when the batter shows bunt, the first baseman can charge. The third baseman, I always play my third baseman six feet off third base and six feet in. And when the batter shows bunt, he does not charge. He waits until the ball is down. If the ball is bunted to the pitcher, the third baseman goes to third. If the ball is bunted towards the first baseman, the third baseman goes to third. If the ball is bunted towards the third baseman and there's doubt in his mind at all whether it's going to be his ball or the pitcher's, the third baseman would charge. The third baseman would charge on that play. So here's what it looks like. Man on second base, standard bunt defense. Okay. You've got the uh, third baseman charging. You've got the first, excuse me, you've got the first baseman charging. You've got the third baseman holding back and reading. Okay, when the ball is down, the shortstop goes to second. The second baseman goes to first. Notice the position of the left fielder. He anticipates the throw from the ball through the third baseman for the overthrow there. Notice the position of the right fielder from the ball through first base, the overthrow there. And the center fielder positions himself in a position uh, maybe uh, from the ball through second base, assuming that one of the fielders would throw the ball, say the ball was bunted in the air, and the ball would be thrown back to second base, and he would be in that position there. The point of this is, though, the third baseman. He can't come until there's doubt in his mind, until the ball's down and he makes a read. Again, what's the rule? If it's at the pitcher or at the first baseman, third baseman goes back to third. If it's tards the third baseman and, and it's at him, or maybe there's doubt in his mind, he needs the charge. If the third baseman has to feel the ball, then generally what would happen is the pitcher wouldn't be fielding the ball, then I have the pitcher hustle over and be the back guy at third base. Um, now one other point I'd like to make, it's perfectly okay, and there are some coaches that prefer the shortstop to go to third base to be the back guy. Uh, for me personally, I want my shortstop to go to second base. I want him to handle the ball there just in case the batter runner uh, is safe at first and we need somebody at second, or just in case the ball is butted in the air and the runner at second base goes halfway, then tries to come back, I've got to have second base covered immediately in that, on that play. So I always put the shortstop going to second base in this situation, and the pitcher would be the guy at third base, uh, keeping the, the batter runner from second, who's made third safely, keeping him honest, um, and letting the third baseman field the ball. If the third baseman doesn't field the ball, he needs to be at third base.